Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. The operational word to describe things in the church these days, to borrow from Pope Benedict, is filth. And while the filth all comes in a number of different varieties, it's all related. And for the record, we should understand filth in the broad sense of that which leads people either away from the faith or into sin or both, but especially away from the faith, thus essentially destroying their supernatural defense against the diabolical. So let's examine the various types of filth, remembering that at the end of the day, it's all still filth. There is, of course, the headline filth of homosexual predation on both adults as well as minors, but that's not the only filth. There is the theological filth of the past 50 years, and this has many facets to it. From the insanity that we have a reasonable hope that all men are saved, to what amounts to a universalism that all religions are essentially the same and lead to God, to the demonic notion that your conscience, even uninformed or even malformed, is the final arbiter of truth. All these individual pieces of theological filth are interrelated, each one feeding and feeding off the other. Then there is the liturgical filth manifest in nearly every parish, the lack of reverence in Mass, the failure to understand the Mass as a sacrifice, not a mere meal, the emasculation of many priests, the horrible childish preaching, the nonstop emphasis on emotionalism, the focus on the community as opposed to the worship of God. Moving down the filth list, we come across the particular filth of the acceptance of heresy, Many converts from Protestantism will tell you that more and more they don't see that much of a difference between what they converted from and the church they converted to. That's been intentional. Whatever the motives, and that depends on who you're looking at, there was and continues to be an intentional push to make the church appear and sound more and more Protestant. Protestantism is a heresy with its emphasis on personal relationship with Christ outside of the church, the sacraments, devotions, etc. Yet, more and more, church leaders continue to peddle these heretical beliefs as somehow able to be interpreted as Catholic, the Alpha program being the most notable, but no means, by no means the only one. The distinctions between Catholicism, the one true faith, and the 40,000 different heretical sects which comprise Protestantism Well, they're simply downplayed in classrooms, pulpits, writings, you name it. Wherever a Catholic lives, you will find a Catholic priest shortchanging the faith and handing over spiritual poison to the faithful. The failure to preach on the need for confession, the need to be properly disposed to receive Holy Communion, the need for a vigilant prayer life, a spirituality modeled on the saints, and so forth— The majority of Catholics hear none of this the majority of the time. That's filthy because the lack of this knowledge leaves them defenseless against the attacks of the devil. But the underlying point is straightforward. All of this filth, all from the same source. It's all from the same source, just expressed differently at different times in differing ways. Be it moral, theological, liturgical, catechetical, it's all the same filth, and it's accomplishing the same end, the destruction of souls. Ask yourselves, why would a Catholic have the slightest idea that the Mass is a sacrifice, a representation of the oblation of the Son to the Father? Exactly how would he draw that conclusion when all he hears is, we are family, and turn around and greet your neighbor, and lay people run around all over the altar handing out the bread to the community? Ask yourself why a Catholic would see any essential difference between the church and heretical sets of beliefs when all he sees and hears in the parish are those same heretical beliefs and notions just with a really thin Catholic veneer. The list goes on and on. The Catholic faithful have been assaulted from every side and in every way from Catholic leaders for the past half century, and now they have been reduced to a remnant, the authentic believers. Those who still go to Mass but do not either understand or believe the faith will disappear soon enough as they die off, their parishes continue to be closed, and their children and grandchildren never come into a Catholic parish. All that will be left from that crowd is some vague memory that 
Grandma, I think, didn't she used to be Catholic? She was, wasn't she? Eh, whatever. This has been a master plan to repackage the faith, to break from tradition for the past half century and give the devil his due in all of this. He has been wildly successful. For any Catholics out there are perhaps coming around to this reality, but still aren't sold on it, who thinks clapping in mass and girl altar boys and so-called Eucharistic ministers are okay? Any of you will consider this. Even if those things and many others were well-intentioned, and they weren't, you have to admit that they have been a colossal failure. There are now fewer parishes in the U.S. than there were when all of this began in 1965. And while owing strictly to overall population increases, the raw number of Catholics has increased, there are fewer going to Mass and receiving the sacraments than again back in 1965. Open your eyes, just like we had to here at Church Milton when all this became undeniable to us as well. Do you believe the church is the means to salvation? Do you believe there is no salvation apart from the church? Then if those doctrines of the church are correct, notice the word doctrines, then wouldn't Satan want to destroy the church? And if he wanted to destroy the church, what would he do? How about introducing, little by little at first, a level of filth and poison so as to corrupt the clergy who are the bearers of the sacred? He went after them at the Last Supper in the upper room, and he hasn't stopped since. All this filth has one goal, your damnation and the same for your families. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.